Hello everyone. I wanted to go over some of the referencing tools that are offered in Microsoft Word 2010. I think you'll be using these um, as you go along in the course, and I think they'd be useful for some of the projects as well. And for an example, I'm going to use the independent challenge number four that's located in unit A in your text. Now the first part of the project, step one, has us do a, a bunch of different things, changing the spacing, the margins, um, putting in headers and um, page numbers. So I'm going to start uh, doing that in no particular order um, just because it's all part of that one first step. So first thing I'm going to do is go up to um, select over here and select all. So I have every single thing selected. Under the home tab there is a paragraph group in the corner of that, I'm going to expand that dialog box out, change the spacing to double space, click this box that basically says don't add space between paragraphs of same type or same style. That'll prevent a very large gap between your paragraphs when you're in double space. It looks very awkward and it just isn't appropriate. Also, um, since I'm in here, I'm going to indent the first line. Um, typical indent is um, five, five uh, 0.5 inches and I believe I believe that's it um, for alignment uh, I'm going to just do this section individually and center that it also wants us to um, put some spaces in here so I'm going to enter 10, 10 times to get this more or less in the center of the document the next thing is going we want to do is um, add a um, add a header. So I'm going to go up to here to the insert tab, and I'm going to select um, over here in the header footer group. I'm going to select header. Now I like to use the center one here or the blank with three columns. And usually what I do is I I don't use the middle column, so I'll delete it when I get to that point. So um, let's see, what's it want us to do? It wants us to put in, um, t in the first spot, it's going to, let me get rid of this one. Um, it wants us to put in a running head, so, and then the title. I'm going to cheat a little bit here and copy the title and then place it back up in here. And I'm going to paste that in there. Now, of course, it, it's very long, so it dropped us um, down a page, so or down a space. So I'm going to hit delete until I can get rid of that and bring everything up. Um, also, when you put in a title, it usually wants you to um, have it to be um, uppercase. So I'm going to go into my font and change that to all caps, and that should fix it. Now I'm going to click in the text type here. I'm going to go over to the <clears throat> header footer group and I'm going to modify the page number. So I'm going to click on that. And what I want to do is I want to put in the current or current page or page number, but I want to put it in the current position. That is where my space or my um, cursor is under that text uh, type text. So if I clicked on that and I put, click, select that, you will get uh, the first page set up in the right spot. Now to save time, I'm not going to change my name or the institution, but you need to do that. Uh, place your name in the title, also your institution, what college you're actually going to. Um, in the second, on the second page, it wants us to take the abstract and center the um, first center the title of that and also take off the indent um, off from the first uh, paragraph. It also asks us to place another title in here that's independent or different from the, the header or the title header. So I'm going to go into insert again and I'm going to select um, header. And again, I'm going to select the header that we had. Uh, that is uh, the the blank with three columns just because I like to use that one. Of course I'm going to delete the center column and 
Again, I'm going to click on the text type, go over to the header footer group, and say um, current position, and it's going to put page two there. And of course, for this, um, because you don't put running head um, on the following headers, um, on following pages, I'm just going to put in the title, which I should already have still on my clipboard. So I'm just going to modify that to um, all caps. And we should be, we should be done with that section. Now that we're finished with step one, uh, we're going to move to step two. And it's asking us to basically find this, this plant, let's find a particular spot in the document so we can start working on our references. So I'm going to go up to find, make sure I'm clicked in here, go up to find, it gives me the find um, dialog box or navigation bar over on the side. And um, what I'm going to look for is, um, looks like it's saying I want to find the words um, participation in the wide, wider society. I'm betting I can probably find wider society, narrow it and get to it, what I'm looking for here. Wider society. There it is. That's, that's how you search for something. And it basically, now if there's multiple options for wider society, it would probably show up in this document, but I am positive that there isn't more than one. And so I'm just shortening things up just a little bit. The text is asking us to create a book resource uh, or basically a reference. And um, so the first thing I'll do is go up to the review tab. I'm sorry, the reference tab and then select manage resources. And I want to actually create a new resource, but first let me show you some things here. Right now there are currently all of these resources located in the text that have already been created for this document. Right? Now I can click on one and I can I can delete it, which will stick it back over here, or I can edit it, but I need to create a new one. For step two, it's asking us to create a new one for a book. There are lots of options. You can have journal articles, reports, conference proceedings, websites, electronic sources, all sorts of things like that. Let me click on websites real quick. Sometimes websites don't always list the author. So instead of the author, you would want to click maybe corporate author, which would normally be the place representing the website or the name of the website itself. And then here are all the options for the information for the website. Of course, the URL is very important as well. So, but for this instance, we're going to be selecting a book. And the author of the book, the text tells us is Dennis with one, a, a one N. Well, and the title of the book is Audience Analysis. The year is 1997. The city is Thousand Oaks. And the publisher is Sage Publications. And I'm going to select OK. Now it's created that over here. All right. So I'm going to copy it over to actually it's already it's already over here. So I it's because I created this before. And I'm going to delete the duplicate I made. So it's already over here. But if you're creating a new one, you're going to create it, and then you will probably um, you will it'll actually show up in the current list but you can move things back and forth move the publishers and your references back and forth as they appear in the document so I'm now going to close that my cursor is still here and 
what the what the book is basically saying is that um, in step number three is that we want to create a citation for this author right after a direct quote. Anytime that you in an APA format, anytime that you um, have a direct quote, you need to not only indicate the author and the date, but also the page number of, of the text or where you where it was located in the text. Now, if you're just not if you're not doing a um, direct quote in quotations, the author the author's last name and the date is is sufficient. Oh, I must remind you also that under your options for uh, mine are, mine is already set, but under your options for bibliography, we want to make sure that the APA sixth edition format is set. Um, once you do that, it shouldn't change in your um, in your um, Word program. If it does, of course, you'll need to do it. But I believe it it'll watch, changing that actually changes the default for you. Okay, so what I'm what it's the book is asking us to do is to put a reference for Dennis um, McQuail. So because Dennis McQuail is already his name is already mentioned here. Um, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently than we typically would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert citation. I'm going to select that author and it sets that author right there in the text for me. Um, it makes it a lot easier and this is in the proper APA format. However, um, this isn't the way I want it to be done because I'm doing a direct quote and um, I need the page number. Because the author's name is mentioned already in the text, I need to omit that, but I will keep the date because I may have several resources, um, references from the same author, but in different books or maybe different uh, websites. So I'm going to click on the expansion window here. I'm going to edit citation. And I'm going to put the pages, which is page 99, as indicated in the in our textbook. I'm going to omit the author because I don't need that. And I'm also going to omit the title. If you don't select that, it will actually put the title of the book in there, which we don't want. We want to omit the title. So it just shows us the year and the page numbers and it has updated the information appropriately in APA format. That's how that's done. Textbook asks us to um, do a couple more searches and also uh, another create another reference, but I'm going to skip down to um, section number eight, and that basically is asking us to create a bibliography or an APA. We call it a reference or references. So I'm at the bottom of my document. I hit Control Enter to create a hard return. Um, so I get into a, sec a new page. I'm going to go up to References. I'm going to click on the bibliography and I'm going to place a bibliography right into my document. We're asked to take this and also change it to double space. Make you a hanging indent and double space and also we're going to change this bibliography to uh, references. So I'm going to um, change this to centered and then type in references. That probably should be black and not bold. And I think I'll hit enter one more time to make it a little bit cleaner. And that's how the references are generated and um, how you can manage those references uh, using the uh, references tools. And you'll see in there, there's a lot of options on how to manage your resources as well as the citing, inserting citations and bibliographies. Um, that's about it. Um, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you very much.